Uh, good afternoon or good evening. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, so uh, it's good to be here, like face to face. And um, today, we're going to probably provide a overview of um, what data stacks has got to offer and what we believe, like probably having the right API strategy is great, but you need to have a great data strategy to be having a, a great APIs that expose um, data or share data that help to drive business value, right? Definitely exposing data through API can accelerate innovation, provide actionable insights to make smart additions, right? And also it might help you to bridge your legacy systems with some of the new technologies, right? Um, so in this workshop today, I'll be demonstrating on how to build a modern secure data um, as a service layer that will be exposed through APIs and other flexible consumption patterns. So about myself, um, Krishnan Narayanaswamy um, started off as a R&D engineer cutting code for various organizations. I've built great products for different organizations, including analytics platforms. I've helped customers on a number of various technologies, um, including cloud native technologies, have a wealthy of experience on databases, streaming platforms, cloud Kubernetes, um, automation, and CI CD. So based out of Melbourne, uh, feel free to connect um, on LinkedIn. Um, just giving you some sort of statistics today, right? So um, I mean, this is not a surprise to us. So today we live in a connected world, which is like always on and we are consuming a lot of digital media, right? So nearly seven hours, that's, a, that's an average. That's what they say, that human beings are connected with digital world, right? And now we have added kids to the list, and, and like 92% is the shocking number that we talk to sort of mobile devices and whatnot. Now what that is driving is a, a lot of creation and consumption of data, right? And it doesn't sort of get or slow down at all, right? So let's have a look at the numbers, right? So in a 60 minutes or 60 seconds, sorry, um, these are the things that are happening around us, right? So there are uh, $6 million that are spent online. There are 500 hours of YouTube content being uploaded, right? And 28,000 Netflix subscribers, lots and lots of Instagram posts, right? And, and TikTok is seeing 5,000 new downloads of their app, right? So these are great numbers, right? Um, now, for gamers as well, like Twitch and, and people on LinkedIn um, are generating so much of data. And this is just on the digital, right? But be it SMS or email, right? So there are 197.6 million emails sent um, every um, sort of 60 seconds. Now, what do they project? Um, so this is sort of the volume of data that's being projected in 2025 um, by Statistica, right? That the information that would be created, captured, copied, and consumed worldwide. So 180 zettabytes of data. So data growth is real, it's huge, and it is fast, right? And, and, and what they also say is huge growth in uh, real-time data. So out of that 180 zettabytes, 30% of that is going to be uh, real time in 2025, right? So back in 2006, right? So a person, Clive humbly said, okay, so data is the new oil, right? And then another gentleman, Michael Palmer, came in and said, okay, like oil, data is valuable, right? So it is unrefined. It cannot be really used as it is, like raw data cannot be consumed, right? So you need to make meaningful information, right, um, out of the data, right? Uh, that's, that's perfect, but with the amount of volume of growth, I was reading a new article, right, and, and um, there's a person called Jim who said, data is not oil, it's, it's kind of a radioactive material like plutonium, right? It's very, very powerful, but dangerous when it spreads, right? And it's difficult to clean up, so, and when we don't use it properly, uh, we have serious consequences, right? So some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves, so are we really using its full power? Are we processing it with care, right? And we all build great technology, right? But without the power of data, 
uh, technology isn't going to be meaningful for our users, right? Okay, so everybody are hit with this data growth, not at that scale, but even your organization, when you build an app, you are hit with data growth, right? But at a different scale. But all, but all we know is, are we ready the way that data is growing? Are we ready for that growth? So we've been building great apps, no doubt about, uh, about that, right? So we've been breaking down monoliths to microservices. We have been um, like probably doing greater deployment patterns, right? We have been doing containers. We're doing a lot of automations to deploy our apps easily, right? But what about data layer? Sometimes we still have our data layer to be sort of the monolith, right? So like it doesn't scale. Few use cases, few things like, for example, 20 or 30 years of RDBMS mindset, right, is, is there in our brains, right? And sometimes we miss to uh, like understand certain use case and use specific databases for that need, right? So we use a lot of past services today uh, from various cloud, right? And, and they are all great distributed databases, but underlying architecture is still monolith in some cases, right? They are offered as a service to you. You pay, for, pay as you go, but still, can it scale? Um, sometimes you go and use a path service and you hit with the limit, right? So that at a very volume growth of data, there are limits. Or for some users, they become really, really expensive, right? And, and once the, every application storing data at the different areas, now you have data silos, right? And what happens there is your cost of operations to manage that, um, that level of growth of data becomes exponential, right? Okay, let's sit back and, and think about it, right? So as a developer, so do I sort of like learning new query languages? Yeah, I'm done with SQL, maybe SQL and Gremlin, so on and so forth, right? So like, do I even care about what data is being stored, right? So I just want to use a storage, just give me JSON or any other format I like, just store and, and retrieve, right? Do I care about schema? Do I care about structures? No, right? I want to release features faster to my customers, and I don't have time to go through all of this nowadays, right? So now we all are educated and trained in sort of normalizing that data, right? We are very comfortable with joins because when we learned, I mean, storage was expensive, and that's how we were taught, right? Now the equation is different. So storage is really inexpensive, right? So now we have to start to have that mindset where we design for application performance, right? So we design for our queries, right? So we don't have to worry about optimizing storage costs, right? And storing it in a normalized fashion and doing all the join, right? Now, now, like how many times we like spin up teams to like build an API layer or a wrapper around the data, right? So it's a common pattern. Right, so we'll talk about that. I'll cover um, how we help in, in solving those problems. Now, with uh, like operators and data DBAs, right? So um, do they even like when somebody comes and cleans up or truncates a DB? Do they like providing access to developers? And then developers come back and say, hey, can you roll back, right? So who likes all these operations? Um, and that too on a weekend, right? So. Do you like opening ports for communication? Security team is behind the operations team in these use cases, right? So do you like installing and running databases or streaming platforms, especially distributed ones, right? They're very complex to manage. Now, think of installation, think of upgrades, think of backup and restore. So many complex operations for the operations team to manage. And uh, we have security, monitoring, throttling our requests and so on and so forth, right? Now, what, what do we need then? So we have to sort of start to treat data as a first class citizen, right? Now, we are, we're doing great application architecture and we have to extend that to data. So we need a modern data layer that scales and behaves same way as how we design our apps, right? So they have to be on common set of principles like high availability or cloud native or serverless and so on and so forth. So that's the sort of data as a service is what 
um, uh, data stacks is, is, is offering, right? So now we need a cloud native serverless data layer. So what that means is across, sitting across any cloud, right? So you want to be seamlessly moving around data and you want the data to scale as per the data growth and, and application needs or any use case that come along, right? Now you, it's, it's better if it's fully managed and operate, operated by uh, somebody else and complete no ops, right? So you don't really care about uh, how do I size this database when I run on a cloud or data center and so on and so forth, right? It's better if it's API enabled, so um, assisting developers on their productivity, right? And now, managing all this real-time data, right? Now, streaming the event data and transactional data and so on and so forth. So a real-time capability on our data layer is, is a must, considering the, the facts that we know that it's all going to be real-time in the future. So on top of all that, we need sort of a flexible data model, right, that works with different types of data. So structured data, unstructured data, schemaless JSONs or tabular or key value pair and so on and so forth. So at Data Stacks, our mission is exactly that. So we build an open data stack, right? So powered by open source innovation and, and a stack that just works, right? So we have got under the brand name of Astra, we call it, Astra DB, which is a NoSQL database as a service, and Astra Streaming, which is a messaging and a streaming platform as a service, right? So let's talk about some of the like architectural capabilities out here, right? So it's completely uh, multi-cloud and, and cloud native, which means you can deploy on any of the major clouds. Um, the underlying stack is Kubernetes. We'll go into the internals on further slide. Um, now you can deploy the stack, right, in multiple region in a single cloud or across uh, public clouds, right? So um, you have options to deploy them uh, on-premise and private clouds as well, right? And now dynamic data formats. So the database layer can support columnar formats or graph formats, right? Can support document um, formats, right? And, and key value data structures. Now, it's a really high performance with low latency database and it's proven to sort of uh, provide really low latency at a high scale. So for example, Netflix, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Pay, so all booking.com, all of them use um, our database under the hood. So anything that you touch billions of users and still expect uh, sort of single digit millisecond latency for reads and writes, that's uh, probably um, uh, Astra for you, right? Um, recently, we've been working with a customer in India where we are talking about 500 million operations per second, right? And still a single digit uh, millisecond latency there. Um, so on the stream, uh, streaming, right? So we support both um, uh, queuing, pub sub, and, and also streaming, right? And, and we provide stream processing capabilities, which are essentially functions. So you bring your own code, uh, typically Lambda-like um, uh, functions that scale um, as per your needs or based on the messages that are coming along, right? Uh, so we have out of the box uh, Stargate API layer, right? So that provides your developers with all the modern APIs that you need, like including REST API, GraphQL, and um, schema-less document APIs, right? And, and you can also talk through the native CQL if that's what sort of you prefer, right? Now, we also have something called change data capture, so which means uh, you can bring in data from some of your legacy uh, databases that you have, or we also support change data capture between Astra DB to Astra Streaming. So what that essentially means is any inserts, updates, or deletes, or even schema, it's completely propagated into uh, Astra Streaming, and, and you can use that for a number of various use cases, like, say, data replication, or uh, search use cases, or um, so on and so forth, or move it to an analytics platform for further processing, and so on and so forth. So the, you see the list of uh, integrations uh, out there as well. Right? Now, what essentially the benefits um, 
uh, that customers realize here, right? So faster time to market. So your developers are ready to go with out-of-the-box APIs. So just store JSON, and they don't care about what's being stored or how it's being structured under the hood, right? So zero lock-in. Now, you can move around your data between clouds, and, and if you prefer any of the cloud platform as a service offering, you're probably uh, sticking to their protocols and their, their products, and essentially uh, there, right? So here, you can move around if you feel the other cloud is offering you much more uh, benefits in here, right? Uh, complete dynamic elasticity and high availability. So similar to any other SaaS platform like Gmail or any other platform, so we promise an SLA and we stick to that, right? So we stick to four nines of availability and essentially you don't care how we manage, right? And, and we have been doing phenomenally well on our uh, meeting our SLAs for the customers, right? And it's completely zero operational overhead um, from your perspective, literally no ops. You don't even care what's the CPU, what's the memory, what are the metrics, um, how do I back up the data, and so on and so forth, right? And the best thing about this is it's completely true consumption-based billing. So what that means is you only pay for the data that you bring in, so the reads and the writes that you do to the database, for example, are the data that you're streaming into um, our streaming platform, right? And, and the underlying storage. Now, the underlying storage is also the object storage within the cloud, right? So it's really, really uh, at a very, very low cost. Right? Now, as a, as a customer or a consumer, you really don't have to worry, and this is essentially an Astra DB internal, uh, how we have uh, engineered Astra DB, right? So um, you really don't care because you don't see this at all, but just to highlight few aspects here, right? So nothing is sort of monolith here. So everything, as you see here, clear separation of compute and storage, right? So you've got a multi-tenanted control plane and you've got a multi-tenanted uh, sort of monitoring plane there and, and, and a data plane which is separate. So uh, it's we have options like shared tenant, we have options like dedicated tenant as per your needs, right? So what that essentially, individual small microservices can scale separately, right? So the data plane can, so for example, you have number of requests that are coming along, the compute of the data plane can scale separately, right? But for example, your app is to bringing in huge amount of data, but the storage layer can scale separately. So that's the sort of whole idea. And, and as you see, the data is being offloaded into sort of the object storage there. So essentially, it's really, really cheap uh, from a user. And yet, you get that single digit millisecond uh, sort of read and write uh, latency. Now, uh, just to highlight on some of the API um, and, and sort of um, the capability, right? So interoperability capability there. So we do have a REST API where you can perform uh, using JSON normal CRUD operations to your data, right? We have document API where you can bring in um, document-oriented um, schemaless JSON files, just dump in and query. You can even search across JSON paths and so on and so forth, right? Um, we have GraphQL API capability, so you can pick and choose what you want to sort of return, read only uh, uh, only the data that you actually need. You can also federate between data sources. So you can say a GraphQL API, you can say give me this data from this table and combine this with this data from the other table. So that's an also an option. So uh, we have gRPC, so very high performance if you want to uh, execute a CQL. Um, so CQL, is another query language um, that we sort of came up for users um, who are being very uh, familiar with SQL, right? So it, it looks and feels same way. So you can do select star from uh, this table and so on and so forth. So uh, that's kind of another advantage for, for people coming from SQL. It's, it's kind of an easy um, um, shift into AstraDB, right? Um, on the streaming side, we have lots and lots of uh, connectors in terms of sync and source connectors. So we'll see them on the demo, which essentially uh, allows you to integrate the platform with other data sources, right? So 
you can bring in data using those connectors or you can move data out to other platforms using sort of the um, sync connectors, right? The other key thing is similar to the API layer on the database, we have another proxy layer that sits on our streaming platform that gives you complete interoperability between say protocols like JMS, um, RabbitMQ, AMQ, and, and Kafka. So what essentially that means is today if your um, application is talking any of these protocols, you don't have to change your code at all. It's just a configuration change to point to uh, our URLs, which essentially looks like JMS or Kafka, for example, right? Uh, so that's a, a, a great benefit for some of the customers. So that's where Astro Streaming sh shines, where it acts as a messaging platform and also uh, a streaming or a pops up platform, right? On top of that, lastly, we have a DevOps APIs where you can completely do everything through API and also through AP, uh, like through uh, from the user interface. So like in to things like creating database or creating your security token and so on and so forth, right? Uh, just to double click on uh, Astra Streaming. So the same way how we have architected the database, same principles, uh, clear separation of uh, compute and storage here, right? So these bookies that you see are sort of the storage layer, and, and that can scale separately. And, and those brokers are completely stateless, and, and they can actually sort of scale um, separately as well, and, and producers and consumers um, interface um, to a streaming through the broker, right? Um, now, Astro Streaming was sort of invented in the open source community quite recently, right? So it's built on cloud native uh, sort of principles, right? So that's where a lot of features like um, geo-replication and very complex features are um, like out of the box on the, on the platform today, right? And the other thing, uh, like I highlighted before, right? So it works on traditional messaging um, and also sort of streaming. So now again, similar to the Astra DB, it's a very low end-to-end uh, -end sort of latency uh, platform. And, and it can scale uh, for even millions of uh, topics. You have client APIs for a number of different languages similar to the database like Java, Go, Python, C++, and, and .NET, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so there you see that it's kind of a segment-centric replication, right? So uh, just to highlight, um, segment is kind of the lowest level. So you have topic and then you have partitions on the topic and that is further divided into sort of segments and replicated across uh, the storage layer. Now, since it's the lowest form of replication, when one of the, like the storage, sort of the bookie goes down or one of the broker goes down, it doesn't really affect, meaning you don't have to do sort of a cluster rebalancing or something of that sort. It's seamless uh, and, and works. And, and when another bookie comes up, the data sort of gets copied um, seamlessly. So you don't really see anything at all. And the other important thing is that there are read and write caches that sit on top of this layer, right? Uh, the bookie layer. Now, that works extremely fast in terms of um, putting data into topic and reading from the topic, right? The other key thing is you can offload this uh, into object storage. So uh, it's like a frequent tire uh, on the storage level. So like infrequently accessed data, you can say, like you can move it to object storage to optimize cost, whereas your frequent data can still be uh, in sort of in memory, right, within the cache, right? So there are a lot of flexible um, replication modes and there are a lot of flexible consumption patterns uh, when it comes to uh, sort of Astra streaming, right? Um, now, so there's a lot of things, uh, I don't know if it's too small, but in terms of the consumption pattern there, you see that like you can use it like an exclusive, like a queue, or you can use it with the guaranteed ordering uh, and, and probably guaranteed delivery as well, right? And it can pretty much um, sort of interface with number of wealthy list of uh, um, sort of 
um, uh, platforms out there to bring in data and also sort of to bring out data, right? So some of the other key features uh, are like say multi-tenancy is built in. So within your organization, you can segregate within the streaming platform, okay, this particular team is working through uh, this namespace. So similar to Kubernetes namespace, you can have number of different other guardrails and controls and security within those namespaces and so on, right? Um, the other key feature is, is the functions that I mentioned earlier, right? So you can bring in your code and, and pretty much um, that works in serverless fashion and it scales automatically. And all these connectors that you see, uh, uh, all of them are essentially function instances. So they can also scale based on uh, your need, right? Cool. So in terms of uh, security, right, so which is very, very um, sort of important, the entire stack is completely encrypted out of the box, encrypted at rest and encrypted at uh, transit using a 256-bit key out there, right? But you can also bring your own key. So uh, currently the data is uh, sort of in our tenancy and a lot of customers bring their own key. So even we cannot read your data because the key lives with you, right, for encryption, right? So we are SOC 2 type 2 compliant. Uh, uh, we, are, we are getting the PCI and HIPAA and all of them are available. And a lot of financial customers, um, big three out of five banks are already our customers and a few telcos as well, right? Um, so a few other things in terms of uh, connectivity or security, right? So you can have private link. So uh, if you don't want the data or, or the um, this thing go over internet, so you can establish between your VPC and our VPC through a uh, private link on any of the cloud. Uh, we can also do VPC peering if that's what you prefer, and very granular control in terms of um, all the RBAC controls, right? So with that, probably I'll, I'll quickly uh, go over um, sort of the demo. Okay, so cool. Okay, so uh, today uh, for, from a uh, demo perspective, I have uh, two parts to it. So one is uh, I've got a small Spring Boot application that reads uh, some of the Twitter feeds, which has a word called BMW on them, right, using a Twitter rule. And what that does is it feeds those two tweets into uh, an Astra streaming uh, topic, right? And then I have a consumer, which is also a Spring Boot app, which sort of gets that data um, and performs a, a sentiment analysis on them to find out whether it's a positive tweet or a sort of a negative tweet, uh, right? Tweet, sorry. And I have a function which also then routes um, tweets into based on their language to a different topic uh, within uh, this, um, Astra Streaming, right? Now, I'm using a Astra Streaming to Astra DB Sync connector where I'm doing on the fly mapping and, and sort of persisting that data into uh, Astra DB. And then I have a user interface which uh, hooks up to two things one is the Astra DB for all the tweets. And the other one is it's also reading all the real-time data that's coming along. So let me probably, so I'm running the uh, three Docker containers on my um, laptop. Uh, let me go into uh, the UI. So yeah, so this is the user interface, right? So it's getting a feed of um, all those sort of um, BMW tweets and it's, uh, going to find out if it's sort of positive and, and it kind of puts that uh, graph there, right? So now let's probably go through what's um, happening under the hood um, here. So, so this is Astra uh, console, so similar to any other cloud provider login. Um, so you can integrate with any of the SSOs here. So if you want to bring in 
um, Active Directory, um, you can uh, sort of integrate with that or you can use your uh, sort of Gmail to log in. Uh, you also get a free account to sign up. You get 25 US dollars, which is more than like a million uh, reads and requests uh, that you get on the database. So it's, it's normally not this low. I'm just using the, uh, the uh, free Wi-Fi here. So it's probably taking some time. Um, so what, um, so uh, probably I'll go through the DevOps API while that loads. So, so this is essentially the DevOps API that you can use to sort of uh, do anything with your Astra console. So for example, creating a new database or um, all the database operations in terms of terminating and, and suspending and so on and so forth. And, and not, not only that, right? So all the authentication related, uh, creating a token, um, so creating new roles, creating users, right? Creating private links, VPC peering. So anything that I'm going to show on the UI is all driven through API as well. And we have Terraform modules and Ansible playbooks where you can use to drive and integrate with, within your CI CD platforms. So this is essentially the uh, Astra console. And currently I'm on a free plan, uh, which is a, a probably 25 US dollars a, a month. Um, so my Twitter um, sort of tenancy, which is my streaming platform is here. Um, so the way sort of uh, as, a, as a developer or as an admin, the way I sort of go and create that is um, create a streaming um, tenant and then I pick and choose the cloud I want and, and sort of choose the region, right? Now, uh, and then you get a, a complete um, sort of a streaming platform ready to go and, and you can use these URLs to start to um, talk to the uh, platform. So like we mentioned, various support for various languages, you have samples on how you would uh, typically connect to the um, streaming tenant here. Now, uh, all our messages are essentially going into uh, these topics out here. So I have segregated, segregated that with uh, namespaces out here. So there are three topics where I have um, from the Twitter API, all the messages go in here, and then uh, the, the function routes that, based on whether it's English or not, it routes to 2DB or um, to the sentiment analysis, and then uh, that gets persisted in there, right? So the, you can look at all the metrics, and, and essentially, so like we said, we charge based on the reads and the writes, right? So these are some of the metrics, um, like your data uh, at what rate, uh, and, and, and if you go into the settings, you will see these are the ones that contribute to your uh, billing, right? So it's completely pay-as-you-go model. Um, and so now for functions are typically like Lambda-like functions where uh, you can just bring your own code. So um, what I've done here is I've said, this is a, a Java-based uh, program which is going to hook up to from Twitter API topic. And, and you can in fact see the logs on what's actually happening, uh, uh, everything within the console for that particular functions. Now this is very powerful. You can even um, um, integrate this with Kubernetes so the function workers can stay outside as well. Even that's an option, right? So you want complete scalability. And, and syncs are a great way to sort of store data to external platforms. So here, currently I'm syncing to Astra DB itself, but uh, you have a number of different options out of the box um, to be able to select here. So I'm using the Astra DB sync, but you can store it to Elasticsearch. Um, you can store it to any JDBC or Kafka or Kinesis or Snowflake and so on and so forth. So uh, like with the API call or with a bunch of clicks, um, is straight away your data is in the other platform, right? Uh, this is more about bringing in data into the streaming platform. So you go ahead and say create a source and you could choose uh, like say Cassandra source or uh, if you prefer to bring in data from some of your RDBMS databases, right? So you can do uh, bring, uh, so DBCM Oracle as in what happens is every changes that happens to your Oracle database today 
will be streamed into Astra streaming automatically through this uh, sort of source connector, right? <clears throat> and these are the uh, sort of uh, interoperability that I was talking about. So, for example, if you have uh, a currently JMS uh, client which is talking to um, uh, a JMS queue or something, so you can straight away con change the configuration to use this one, right? And, and your code is still a um, sort of JMS language and you don't have to change anything except the configuration, right? And same goes with Kafka or RabbitMQ or Prometheus, right? Now, let's look at the, uh, the Astra DB where all our Twitter gets sort of stored here, right? So uh, it's currently in um, Sydney region in, in sort of running on uh, Google Cloud, right? Now, in terms of connectivity to the database, like I was mentioning, uh, so this is sort of the document API, right? So you can straight away um, um, uh, go and interface with this interface using all these parameters, right? So you, all you need is um, the DB ID and, and sort of the, what is the key space and where region and, and a token. So we'll come to the token now. So, and, and straight away you can store schema-less JSONs into um, sort of the, so this is the uh, sort of the GraphQL um, API, right? So you can interface with uh, uh, GraphQL as well with the database. You get out of the box REST API. So if you have a table, um, you can straight away uh, do a post to store that data into the table and do a get um, out of the box. You get a, a CQL console to interface as well. So you can execute select star type queries into uh, the CQL console. Um, so I can say describe uh, Twitter. So this is my key space. And if I say um, select star, select star from Twitter, and um, there you go. So you've got all the um, data of all the Twitter being stored in there, right? And essentially, this is the change data capture. So any uh, commits into uh, uh, a particular table, you can enable CDC to a streaming tenant. And then instantly, you could have uh, thousands of consumers acting on that data. So uh, it's, it's, again, a bunch of click. Uh, it's, it's all in there, right? Uh, in terms of... Um, security settings, so here is where you sort of configure your private endpoints, your IP access list, and, and sort of. Uh, the other great functionality is uh, we do sort of provide a lot of metrics on the console, but if you have external CM systems or uh, uh, things like where you're aggregating all the metrics like Splunk and whatnot, we could export the metrics as well. So that's an option as well. So. Uh, in terms of um, some of the key metrics, right? So you no more care about any of the infrastructure level metrics, um, like what's my compute, what's my um, memory, and so on and so forth, right? So all you care about is the uh, application, uh, how well it is reading and writing data from the database, right? Um, yeah, I think probably it's internet is really, really slow. But anyway, so any questions um, so far on what we have seen? Um, happy to take up any questions. Yeah, so, so that's a great question, right? So um, we support uh, indexes. You can filter data as well. So we have something called storage attached indexes, right? So that really speeds up in terms of querying data or filtering data and so on and so forth. So that's an utmost uh, performance improvement uh, there as well while doing. Yes, we do support indexes. Cool. And 
uh, probably um, I'll, I'll also like prob um, show um, like a small um, TikTok clone. So uh, just uh, from a, this is like a, um, using Netlify and, and, and Jamstack and, and probably using Node.js here. So essentially uh, it's using uh, Node.js um, uh, library called uh, AstraJS Collections, which uh, uh, we have built, right? So uh, what it is doing is it's calling the document API. So it's basically storing JSON file and retrieving. So to sort of um, work with the um, Astra DB, right? So all you need is essentially just your database ID. You go, go and create it, and and your region and and sort of the application token, um, and then um, the the sort of the uh, key space where you're uh, interfacing, right? So I'll let this start and. So that's essentially like a small TikTok clone. Um, so if we go into sort of the developer console, you should see that um, uh, there's probably uh, an array of uh, seven documents which has come, which are essentially uh, nothing but uh, JSON-based files. And that's how the user interface is sort of loading, right? So the data is actually coming in from um, the, the TikTok um, sort of data in Astra DB here, um, so that's that's how it's so easy for apps to directly communicate with the database through APIs um, um, in here, right? Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. So the APIs are um, completely schema agnostic. So, uh, for example, if you go into sort of the, um, um, so these APIs, they work for any database or any table, right? You can even filter by certain fields while querying some of the data. So they are completely schema agnostic, right? So they are essentially data APIs. Now, a lot of customers, like financial services customers, right? So what they have done, like for example, open banking, they want a specific contract driven through open API and, and which are agreed with their customers. So they create a domain based API, sort of a gateway outside of this. And that interfaces with the data API layer of us, right? And then queries data and, and sort of uh, does that uh, mapping and transformation, and whatnot. But essentially, it's pretty handy uh, and accelerates your development, right? So you, really need to, you don't need to really build a wrapper or anything, you can straight away start using them uh, as a data API layer. Uh, we just, uh, seek, uh, can we do some uh, aggregation? Yes. So um, you can talk to the database through CQL as well. And uh, so basic aggregations like, say, sum, average, min, max, all of them are supported. And uh, typically, whatever you can perform with uh, sort of Cassandra is all supported here in Astra DB as well. Cool. Um, so I think uh, if that's, um, I'll probably then just summarize. Um, so uh, these are the things we cover, right? So definitely a great TCO improvements, right, um, from running on-prem or running it because, and also there's a lot more engineering which has gone to make it completely serverless that gives you a lot more cost savings, right? So we can defini definitely probably run you through the pricing uh, calculator and, and show you guys on how cheap it is. And simplicity of sort of data APIs, right? Like we saw on the demo and freedom of deployment, right? So you can pretty much go onto any cloud, right? Uh, so, thank you, and uh, visit us at our booth. Um, we are just outside um, out there, and uh, uh, we have a, sort of a, a small QR code on our booth, so if you sort of interested, you can 
uh, sign up for Astra and you get sort of bonus credits as well. Um, and, and there's something like a GitHub documentation where we call it Astra, awesome Astra, right? So where you have lots and lots of samples and demos and things that you can get started even with the free account. Uh, cool, thank you.